Today may be one of those life-changing days for me. Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. It's early. I sure do enjoy this fire. Last year, this was my top priority, getting this put in. And uh, boy, it took a lot of work with that rock wall I did behind there. There's a lot of stuff that went into this, but it worked out really well. I'm not sure I could have done it a lot better. I've got a friend, and uh, he's leaving the city life. He's done a lot of things in the city. He bought some raw land, and he's in the process of building this house. He's got a real, you know, go-to attitude. He wants to get her done. And, uh, you know, he's lamented to me before and said, wow, he says, I just don't know how. He says, I'm, I'm sure I have the skills, meaning I can, I can go through the process. I have the, the, the strength, the ability, you know, the willingness, but I just don't have the information. I don't have, I don't know how do all these pieces go together. How do we do this? So he's working with a couple people with a lot more experience and just kind of picking their brain. And they'll just kind of give him some guidance, some instruction, and then he'll run with it. That's, you know, I, I encouraged him. I said, that's, that's the way I felt, you know, maybe five, six years ago as we transitioned into this. Um, although I wasn't a big video gamer or something, I often compared myself to I felt like a 15-year-old boy who had done nothing but play video games. Now, I was much older than that, more than twice that age, and I hadn't spent much time playing video games, but a 15-year-old boy who has only played video games doesn't know much. Doesn't have a lot of real-life skills. Changing oil, changing a flat tire, you know, dressing a deer. <laughs> There's all sorts of stuff like that that they simply lack. And I've had to learn a lot. I've had to learn a lot. I've had to step out of my comfort zone so many times and do so many things that I guess I'd rather not, but also really intimidate me just because I lack a frame of reference for it. So it's like, ugh, really? And today is going to be one of those days where I once again step outside my comfort zone, but to get done what needs to be done. Sorry. I apologize, it's early. Um, to get done what needs to be done, I have to gain a new skill set. So, I guess I'm going to start welding today. Been around it, seen it before. A friend of mine welded the top plate back on here so we can get this up and running. Now it's my turn. Thankfully I have a friend who's willing to teach me. Um, he's got stuff going on too, you know. He could just do it for me, but that's going to take up more of his time. It'll take him less time just to teach me and let me run with it. And I'll, you know, replace the gas, replace the rods I use, that type of stuff, probably, and then some. But he's going to let me use his welder. He's going to show me what's going on, how to use it. And then i got to take care of some business, because i got to progress on a couple projects around here. And uh, kind of part of the homesteader mentality is just to drop the cost by doing things yourself to be less dependent upon others by learning how to do it yourself welding's a good skill i won't mind being able to do it and today i guess i get to start well i now have the equipment i just don't have the education so my buddy says i can borrow his welder you got an extra welding helmet Sticks, wire brush, hammer, gloves, the leads, and then some magnets there. And we're going to weld on the side of the shipping container. Um, as long as I don't burn a hole through it, I should be good. But I had a friend who screwed boards to the top of it by drilling through the roof. 
which of course led to water leaking afterwards. So that's not what we're trying to do. So I'm thinking this is going to be a better idea. I was originally, if you look up close, thinking of welding a bunch of these angle irons on sideways like that, but my buddy might have a better idea. So we might try that instead. So I'll wait for him to come down and give me the education and then get started. How's it look up there, son? No, it's good. Go spit your head pot. Yeah, it fits my head. I just gotta pull some dreads out the top of it. So, change of plans up here and it's been working. These I'm gonna put on here this way. And I'm spacing about every 16 inches apart. We'll put the board next to this and have it run out to the edge and be able to screw in sideways. These will all be cut off. I'm just welding on full size ones right now. And I'll grind, use an angle grinder to cut them off and run them the length of here. Originally I was thinking of putting them like this and having the board sideways behind there, but that's too much of a flip flop type thing. Or this, I'll screw them on and then I'll run a board flush against them all to connect them all as well. What do you think, Bug? Good. It looks good. It looks good? So my welds are varying, but they seem to be working and holding. If anyone has any welding tips, by all means, feel free. Um, just kind of learning by trial and error, but I'm learning how to get it started, how to keep it going, and it's been working pretty good for me, so that's important. I'm just gonna prep all my stuff all the way down so I can weld up as many as I need and then go from there. So I'm just gonna grind the paint off so that way I got a good contact and uh, yeah. Not a welder, never welded before. Look like this when I'm welding, but kinda. Probably, do you guys recognize that at all? Does that look familiar to you? Used to paintball a bit too. They'd uh, call me Predator with the mask and all that hanging out. Remember where we used to get all of our politicians from? The movie Predator. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get back to welding here. So far, so good. And I got a couple other projects to do too, which uh, I'm looking forward to getting done. What do you guys think? Should I maybe put in a pond? The only reason I ask is, if you look out there and wait for it, there we go. See the bulldozer? Those are good for groundwork, for earthwork. What do you think? Should I put in a pond? Water is important. Foot, 40 foot shipping container and 50 foot leads. So I gotta move my uh, trailer with that generator on a little bit closer. I'm gonna back it down. The problem is I stuck that uh, 
barn tin right there. But I think we only got about four left, right son? How many is it? Yeah. Four. Four? All right. So we're heading on down this way. They might be kind of overkilled a little bit, but I'm gonna buy a new pack of sticks for my buddy, I think. And uh, yeah, get them going. All right, carefully boys. Let's finish this up. What? Well, I backed up a bit and got one more <laughs> welded on. And as much as I'd like to just finish these couple sticks, well, it's still today and have that just crossed off the list. It's still bow season. And I'm guessing there's deer like right over there or there will be shortly. So I'm gonna go back to the woods. Ah, part of being a homesteader is providing. Deer is providing. So I'm gonna go see if I can get one of those quick. Well, no deer, no deer last night, but almost done with this. I got four, four on this that I gotta get done. And honestly, I'm not sure if I'm just moving to put the whole roof up here or if I got a pile of welding uh, to do other places because I'm gonna have my shipping container here. I have for years. And I'm gonna have those poles and stuff here. So it's not as pressing that I get this moving if I got a limited time offer with this uh, welder. Not that I couldn't borrow it again later. But I think I might finish this welding job and then I got some welding to do up in my garden. That's pretty important. But let me tell you this, this looks really nice. I still gotta cut these off. But look at that, how nice and uniform. They're all about 16 inches apart. Running the whole length of here. And what I'm gonna do is, again, just trim them off here, put the board next to them, and then screw into them, and have them uh, reach out over that way so I can clean up and organize and protect all that stuff while it still exists. But coming out here this morning, looking down this row, it looked pretty cool just to see that whole thing like that. Yeah. So let me fire this thing up and keep going here. These four shouldn't take long. It's just too far of a distance. I thought by backing my trailer up as far as I did, I'd be able to reach, but I gotta go further. I was trying to avoid moving all these 18, uh, this is like 50 some 18 foot pieces of metal, but all them corners were stacked up here. So I just took some thick plastic, put it over the corner and then just drove over the top of it. But it's still too close to get the whole trailer in. So I'm gonna have to pull these back to get my trailer backed up more so I can finish those four. More messing around than I'd like to, but it is what it is. Man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. So I think I'm gonna pull the trailer forward and then pull those back and back the trailer in here.
So, looking at the clock here, that was 20 minutes to do four of them, two welds each, five minutes per, two and a half minutes per weld. Definitely room for improvement, and I'm not going for uh, beauty here. I'm not concerned about that. I'm just concerned for function. I just want it to hold. Um, it's very, very, very important to me because I'm gonna invest some time and effort and resources in putting this thing up, and I want it to stay up. So, uh, they look like they're gonna hold. They're not all pretty, but I'll give you a close look. I am welcome to criticism and comments and advice and stuff too, but uh, just figuring this out. I have mere hours invested in it. Um, did a little bit yesterday and came out here for 20 minutes worth of welding this morning. So I'm very, very new at this, but looks like it's working. Let's check this out. Uh, that's that last one I just did. Uh, this one's got bubbles in it. It's got room for improvement, but they're gonna hold it looks like, and they're all the way up there. And I only need a, a short section to actually be held there, so I've got about 18 inches extra on each of these. I'm gonna cut those off now, and maybe check some of my resources. Check what I got for length on some of these boards and stuff. Um, boy, I'm excited. I'm excited to be this close to accomplishing this. Um, this was one of my top three priorities last year which means it's always been there. It's something I always need to be working on, and I know that. But a number of things need to happen for me to get it done, so looks like by the end of this year I'll have it up, and then I'll just have that root cellar to focus on as far as focus is. We'll see. Is that the last one? Whoa! You got her off. So now with the help of Bug, all these are shortened to where they need to be. They're all welded on and cut off, and we'll use them as a mounting fixture for our boards running out to the edge of our poles. Alrighty then. I do have welding to do in my garden, and I think I might save that for tomorrow. But right now, I just found out my stacks right over there. That's eight feet worth of metal each. It's technically like 13 feet out on my shipping container. So I'm probably gonna run 15 foot boards, and then maybe use that metal on it and save these 18 foot long ones for another project, which, which could make sense with some of the things I got going on. Oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna count up how many boards I need. I'm gonna start making some 15 footers. Gonna have to splice them. But this is looking good. Oh, it's times like this I'm excited. I don't mind being excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanna help me, boy? So I counted it up. I've got 29 of those welded on there. Got almost 14 feet to here, so I'm gonna run 15 footers. And got, these two are 16s, 
everything else I'm gonna splice. So I got all these longer ones here, longer ones there. Bunch of shorties, even shorter ones, so I'm gonna splice them. And I'll just alternate the splices, you know, one in the back, one in the front, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm gonna make 29 of them at 15 feet. Then we'll work on screwing them in up there after we put our board on the edge of here. And we'll get them all going. We might have some of this covered today, depending on how quickly I go. I know it gets dark at like five and I might jump out in the woods to try hunting to it tonight. So I don't know. Let's see what we can do though. Ha! One of my favorite parts, I got buckets just full of nails we pulled out. So when I put this thing together, I can use a bunch of nails without buying them. That's a resource too. Part of the reason I like picking stuff like that up is that I do not want to have them on the ground and drive over them and pop a tire. That's gonna cost me more than I'm trying to spend, but a byproduct of picking them up is that I can use them. And a lot of them are straight enough to drive them right in, which is awesome. See that, son? We're using all the nails. How cool is that? Pretty cool. To the modern mind, reusing nails like this might seem like a strange thing, but it was actually a common practice in a lot of areas uh, a while ago. And what would happen is if a, if a farmer had an old deteriorating barn and they need to build a new one, a lot of times they'd burn down that old barn, use a magnet or something to pick up all the nails from it, and then use those nails on the new one. And I remember back in my native Wisconsin, there was actually an initiative to try to stop people from doing that just to kind of preserve some of the heritage that these old barns had. So, uh, might be strange to some, but definitely been done by others and there's a reason I do it. Nails are sure cheap these days, but every dollar I don't spend is like two dollars I don't have to earn, right? No taxes on picking up a nail and reusing it. Had a pretty good crew with Bugger and Monster Truck helping me. Got 19 of them already made, so we're only 10 shy. But Mama Pepper's in town, taking care of some business, so the girls made lunch. They said it's lunchtime, so I gotta come in and eat. I don't blame them for feeding me. I do a good job taking care of them some days. What do we have going in here? We have lunch. What is it? Chicken rice soup. So mom made that broth with real chicken that we butchered up, right? Yeah. And then you picked the carcasses clean and put rice and stuff in here too? Yes. Awesome, thank you. This is gonna be such a good meal for me. I got a sore throat right now. Plus I've been working hard, so thank you. Let's pray and eat. Oh, that, child, that was awesome. I'm gonna go back outside and get back to work. That was a great lunch, thank you so much. Um, Before you go, we have one more thing to eat. One more thing, you didn't even tell me to save. Oh, 
Okay, I saved room. Let me see that. What'd you guys make? A key lemon, uh, a lemon pie. <laughs> <laughs> key lemon pie. I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. All right, all right. Thank you. And I'm going outside to work. <laughs> what? You guys want me to share, don't you? Wow. Oh, kids, thank you for cooking and loving me. Child, they love me. They made me dessert. Bug, they really did. Um, hi. That was awesome. Son, did you enjoy your pie? Yeah. Yeah, me sure. too. Yeah, good correction. He said yes, sir. Um, wow, I don't know when the last time you guys just randomly had your kids surprise you with a homemade pie. Uh, but I'd recommend it. If it's been a while, I'd recommend it. You, you might even deserve it. All right, let's see what we got. I can't wait, son. I want to go so bad on this. I don't know why, but I do. Probably because I've been waiting years to do it. I guess that's probably why. Too early getting dark these days, but... I now have 29 15 footers, right, Bug? Yeah. So... I'm gonna start here. And uh, I wanted space to be able to pull the vehicle into this lean-to if I needed to. So that's what this is. And then off over here is the septic, uh, the leach field back there. So I didn't want to go too far. And I'm gonna have water catchment um, off of here as well. So that's why things are just kind of staggered. Kind of interesting. But, I'm gonna put the board up here first and then go from there. Well, we got the board up, don't we kids? So I think I'm gonna cut the tops of these cedars off first and I'll drill some holes in the metal and then we'll run some through. What do you think? Sounds like a plan, huh? So this guy here, what's your job? To charge the batteries. To charge the batteries. I've got at least eight rigid batteries right now. And this guy takes care of all my battery charging so that I don't have to worry about it. And uh, other than the one battery that was dead this morning that was messing me up, I didn't know what was going wrong. Um, he keeps them all charged really good. But today, he pulled this splicer out of our shipping container because he's got three chargers available. So he could charge three batteries at once. And I was like, dude, that is so smart. What an intelligent eight-year-old. Not that other eight-year-olds couldn't think of something like that, but I thought that was awesome to come in there and say, man, I saw him find it out there. I just didn't realize that he uh, did anything with it. Oh, son, thanks for taking care of some business. Do you think we can get it done tomorrow? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Probably, even though we're under the weather? Yeah. Still get to work hard? All right, awesome. Wow, thank you, son. 
for being intelligent. You were always a thinker though. If there is an easier way to do something, he'll figure it out usually. He's the type of guy who'll move the bucket closer to me rather than running things over to the bucket all the time. Nice.